You're good. You're good. You move them. Sorry. No, no, no. I didn't. This is not Mark. He must be out. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and call this at the time board of commissioners. Um, Can't put some committee to order. We have a few people here, so as our custom is, we're going to go around the room and introduce ourselves. And for the record, everybody, this this um, particular meeting is filmed. So I'm Kelly Robinson, District Two Commissioner, and I'm the chair of this committee. Jessica Theriot, Assistant to Mark Teal. Uh, Mark Teal, County Administrator. Danielle Sherry Hooper, the Collective Clerk. Jamal Shepard, Transportation Coordinator for the Connect Douglas. Bill Valentin, Transportation Director. Gary Watson, Connect Douglas Director. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and the Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Welcome, everybody. Um, um, Director Valentin, first order of business is um, meeting minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, we uh, have the Tuesday, January 21st, 2020 uh, meeting minutes to uh, adopt. Yeah. And, and, and can I get a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. No discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Valentin, keep going. Yes, sir. Uh, first item is uh, updates from the Transit Services uh, uh, Division. And the first presentation is from the collaborative firm. Uh, Gary, you want to, you want to, to turn it over to Danielle Hoover, who has a presentation for the collaborative firm. Instagram. 
there's a level of on -gauge, um, excuse me, online engagement and monitoring. Uh, the, the goal here with social media is to have a level or an extension of customer service in the digital space as if someone is to walk in off the street on the transportation center and uh, see one of the staff members at the counter. <coughs> excuse me, so with that level of digital customer service, any escalated questions or concerns are forwarded to Mr. Watson and his team um, and, and or answered already. So we do have FAQs that I can pull from and just to give a one-off answer, sometimes it's, what time are you open? What time do you close? And here, in this, here is an example from our uh, last meeting together last month till now. This person some, asked a simple question, how much is the van full? That was prompted because that person may have e either saw one of the posts previously or read the press release or saw the advertisement. So that lets us know whatever we were doing translated. So there was a media, excuse me, a, a press release that went out. There was a social media post about Ample, and there's also, again, uh, digital, or excuse me, print ads. How much is a Ample program was a question online. If I need to ride to work, will you come get me? No, we can't exactly come right to your door unless there's flex ride. So the flex ride is one option. Have you looked into the flex, uh, fixed bus routes um, that are only $2.50 or a dollar for students or riders with disabilities, seniors 60 and older? You can also uh, call in advance for the free flex ride, gave the number, so giving it another resource. So that's just one example of kind of an easy opportunity for customer service and a good touch point. This was the highest um, viewed or uh, highest level of impressions on Facebook. So you may have seen this one. Is it a video? It is. I think we the link. Enabled the link. Yes, please. So while we do that, with this video, it was over uh, 2,427 impressions. So with impressions are, you know, the number of people who viewed it. Thank you. Very simple and easy, uh, and it also piggybacked off of the messaging that we were doing for the month, Vample, uh, and a quick video. And Jessica, for me to go back, mm -hmm. thank you. One to the top left was uh, the highest um, uh, level of engagement on Instagram. That particular post had 175 uh, views, and I think the reason was because it also was one informative. Two, uh, there were other uh, pictures that gave updates about the groundbreaking uh, that we did online back in November. As you know, there are lit drops um, designated locations across Douglas County. So we make sure that they have enough route schedules. Thankfully, uh, Crossroads Church and Lithia Springs Library in particular are running through them. Not a bad thing. Um, it also gives us an opportunity with uh, literature drops to have level of engagement. So for example, Strayer University, um, having literature jobs, having that face-to-face -face, um, uh, opportunity to foster relationships. We now have quarterly class presentations that stem from a literature drop and then class presentations in December. We did that most recently again, February uh, 3rd and 5th. A literature drop and have a conversation with uh, the branch manager at Lithia Springs Library uh, led to uh, ESL group or English as a Second Language uh, training session. So Jamal and I are going <coughs> over there on March the 2nd. It's a wonderful opportunity to be in front of a bilingual community who some already use Connect Douglas and that's after again speaking with um, Mr. Brown over at uh, Lithia Springs Library 
And because it's a uh, ESL group, there's a translator in the room. And this is another opportunity to, one, utilize the video, two, we already have the brochure uh, in Spanish, and three, have an opportunity of education, not only on fixed bus routes, but all other transit services. And then we have, a, obviously, a knowledgeable person in Jamal um, to answer questions um, as they come up. Other engagement activities. Again, the business community, that's something consistent as we uh, grow and move. Um, uh, and move the messaging about the fixed bus route system in particular. There is an opportunity on uh, this February um, 20th, this Thursday, to have an info table, and then we have the video. Um, so that's going to be played on monitors there. Um, and then there was an invitation to attend, um, extended to attend, um, the, the South Metro Development Outlook Conference, and that's in the 18th year? Yes. Within the 18th year, um, under um, obviously the leadership of managing partner uh, Michael Hightower in, uh, of the collaborative firm. Particularly at this um, uh, South Metro Development Outlook Conference, um, Governor Kemp will be giving a special um, address. And this is a wonderful opportunity because we have decision makers, C-level execs, and uh, not only economic development uh, associates in the room, but obviously transit associates in the room from MARTA, ARC, et cetera, across various counties. Um, so it's an opportunity just to have visibility of the first transit uh, program in about 15 years in the area. So um, those who are in the know will be attending. So it's a wonderful visibility opportunity. Continue to working with um, Breezy uh, over at Douglas County Workforce Development. There's an upcoming March 11th Industry Summit. So after the community meetings, we are, are going to lock down the time to, to not only meet, um, and uh, hash out Connect Douglas's involvement at the March 11th industry, industry, industry Summit, excuse me. But with this summit, it's particularly about transportation. So if you can recall back in November, working with Breezy, we gave a survey to, uh, she was kind enough to send it out to her uh, database of HR professionals in, in the area such as Stitch, Stitch Fix, et cetera. And six area companies in particular came back. So um, it was suggested after the March 11th industry, industry summit that we'll continue to lock in those states because those six particular area companies are not only interested in transit, they literally check that survey box, but also are interested in fixed route, van pool, car pulling, um, various services, as well as um, utilizing. Um, basically direct pay or a level of um, voucher program and those are all opportunities to speak when we do um, get in front of those decision makers. As I mentioned uh, earlier, there are community meetings scheduled. As we, uh, we originally met with, initially met, excuse me, with each commissioner and got some feedback. Um, uh, Gary and Jamal did a wonderful job of giving a high-level overview, and, and we, all, we garnered their feedback about the enhancements to the existing routes and some proposed uh, updates, uh, including uh, additional stops, etc. We locked in dates upcoming, February 25, 26, 27, and March 4. This column here are the lines where you can someone you know attendees can ride those routes to get to those locations. So Victoria's Kids Academy, um, they were actually really excited. That's in District One. It's at Autry Circle or across from Autry Circle. Um, we fostered a relationship with them because one, the stop is across the street, and two, it's in the Avalon um, Township area. So we wanted to touch that area in particular um, because one, there's a lot of folks uh, who live in those divisions as well as um, you may heard Commissioner Mitchell talk about Hunters Ridge, that's a big um, community development uh, off of Malone Road, um, and that is one of the closest locations. Other is Hilton Garden Inn. Um, one uh, a proposal would be starting um, a route at that location, so why not on the business <coughs> district that's currently off of Route 30 and 40 have that as one of the locations. Deer Lake Park, and then uh, um, of course, the transportation center. This is um, the flyer. I have some up front, and I have some um, with me as well that um, I'll, I'll um, 
give for anyone who needs or wants those, we would ask that you just please continue to spread the word. The press release went out this morning, and there's some downstairs uh, at the informational table out front here at the table, as well as the uh, literature applications, including larger poster boards at the uh, libraries. Can I entertain any questions or qualify anything? Thank you. Very, very, very well presented. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions from the room? Anybody? Thank you. Just thank you. Job well done. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I have an opportunity to look at the hometown advantage and all the articles. Oh, good. So I always get excited. So thank you. <laughs> good, so good. Really excited. Wonderful to hear. Um, it, when, when, what, so you're still getting feedback from, from citizens. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and again, um, in, in Gary Jamal, do, do we get the feedback or suggestions? Um, we're captain those, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the quality of comments and stuff. And so, where, where do we compile those at? Is it, can, it, can it be distributed? I'd like to just read what the guy just said. Sure. <laughs> just a raw, just like, just, just curious, just something to flip through. Uh, again, I got a, I got a random um, text this weekend. Um, and they're saying, Chris Robinson, can we have buses on Sunday? Can you come talk to us about this? Because people over here at the Senior Center want things, and they want Sunday service. And so, you know, I get random type of things, but I do want to make that a note. Uh, I know we're going to come back to that sometime out in the future, but um, are our hours aligned? Like, do our hours work? That's, that's really the question. Does it work for Monday through Friday? Um, does it work for the business community? I know we had some, um, not a perfect alignment with some of the business community, but what are the thoughts about ours? And I know that has implications, but still. Well, I think the hours are working out very well, maybe with the exception of Route 30. Uh, and of course, we've had that discussion before with some of the warehouse and distribution centers that we don't align exactly with them. And that's something that we'll continue to to work on, especially this, as Danielle meets with, with these businesses over in that area. But as far as the, the other routes, uh, I think we're aligned up uh, very well with those. Yeah, the routes out there, yeah. And it seems to be growing based on the numbers from last time. It's sort of steady. Uh, that people can even get exposed. So um, I guess one more question is, you, you talked about tracking and social media. You talked about views. Uh, Impact? What was the word you use? Impressions? Impressions, sorry. <laughs> Impressions. All right, so, uh, and you talked about people, and I won't call it like click throughs, but you said, okay, somebody responds says, okay, tell me about Bamboo, but we couldn't. Is there a way to tie it right back to what's, what's successful? If I use three or four different marketing media to get the message out there, uh, and I'm, I'm saying, okay, but where am I getting the greatest lift? What, 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 you see what I'm, I'm trying to say something, but I'm not a marketer like you guys. So uh, I'm trying to say, is there any way, does technology allow you to tie it back to see, uh, are we getting the greatest lift in Chapel Hill News and Views? Is it, I'm just. There is a way to tie it back. Um, and I can give you, a, a, it's hard to, at this particular point, to compare apples to apples because this is the first January mm -hmm. within the cycle of this marketing year. So we can do that um, moving forward because of the launch. You know, the advertising started a little earlier and the launch started obviously you know, in June. But what I can do is give you an example of this past December. We did, um, and you may uh, recall at that meeting, um, and I can forward over um, information again about the social media campaign. We did a digital campaign specifically tied to free rides that also corresponded to the ads in Chapel Hill News and Views. And at that point, that was still a full page ad as well as the um, hometown advantage, excuse me. But we also upped the ante um, about December free rides with the Arbor Place table tents. And then we had digital videos, that 30 second ad going on at the Arbor Place Mall. And can you give me the number again, Gary, for December, if you can recall ridership numbers? It was, it was over 3,000. Over 3,000. Yeah. So, <coughs> Um, what we could do is find correlation of efforts made with potential ridership increasing, whether it's direct correlation, um, it's hard to say which, 
but we can say there's a definite tie to efforts made within the marketplace, especially with free rides to um, the results of, of Janu or, excuse me, December and some carryover in January. Um, I think Miguel uh, mentioned one, um, was uh, kind enough to mention one uh, fact with ridership. Is it, if a person rides once, it's 26% more likely? 28% likelihood of a repeat customer. A repeat customer. So if someone's on the ride for free in, uh, in December, they had that experience. So we'll make that money up, potentially, <laughs> um, because of the wonderful experience that they had. Very good. Any other questions, thoughts? Yeah, just yes. one yes, of those comments to the forum that was revolving with positive and constructive feedback. But how are you, are you measuring that? Are you noticing some trends where a lot of those maybe redundant complaints are just diminishing because you've been able to conduct a root cause analysis and determine what the problem is. Are you doing anything? Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, I, would, I would say that the, the most common reoccurring complaint we have is about the, the buses still not being on schedule as, as well as they, they should have. And of course, there's, there's several factors in, involved in that. One, one is the traffic. Uh, the other has, has been the success of our, our flex trails. And I'll show you some numbers about that in just a minute. But of course, to make a flex trail, the, the vehicle has to veer off its, its standard route. And, and sometimes that, that will throw the bus off schedule um, a little bit. So the, those, I would say those are the, the, the more common complaints we get on a recurring basis and we're, we're, we talk about that constantly. We're trying to, to, to address that. Um, people, people are learning how to use the system. Um, our numbers are up and again, I'll talk about those in just a just a minute, but uh, also in, in our data collection, we're finding out that, that just about every stop that we have in the county, all 75 or so of them, people are getting on at those various stops. So they're learning where to get on the bus and, and how, how to ride. Jamal, you got this thing? And just to add to your point, um, and that is correct, that so we're seeing that they are figuring out now with also the usage of the Patio app, where the bus is, to locate uh, what time the bus will be there to their present location. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was telling Gary that I stopped at the transportation center at the platform, and the young lady had the app downloaded, but she wasn't sure how to utilize it. So I had to show her how to go in, select the route that she was looking for, and it was showing that the bus would be there in two minutes. And as we were standing, the bus was coming down the hills <laughs> and turning into the transportation center. So I think it's still about education, too, as well, about how to use the technology. Some of those high traffic areas that you see in the traffic is certainly a problem that causes a huge problem. Have we thought about maybe factoring in part of your equation traffic, the time you may have to change the time that you're saying you're going to be there? Have you thought about maybe you need to add another five minutes and change your time? Well, we're, we're looking into that, but what we're going to try first, and, and we're getting ready to implement this, is that on, on those heaviest routes, <coughs> uh, like uh, 20 and 40, we're going to add uh, an extra vehicle during peak time yes. to combat that traffic. Very good. Any more questions? Comments? Daniel, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Looking good. Very good. Okay. <coughs> next, next item on the agenda also from Transit Services. Uh, Connect up with ridership updates. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> if, if you'll look at this sheet, this has got our, our most current up-to-date uh, ridership numbers and uh, following up with some of the information that, that Danielle gave you. Uh, our numbers are, are strong and getting stronger. Uh, December was our best month. Of course, we offered free rides then, but then we came back and had a really solid January. And February, February is looking uh, strong too. Uh, for January, when you consider the, our standard boardings, flex boardings, and paratransit boardings, uh, we had almost 4,500, which uh, equates out to an average boardings per day of 173. 
And for February, we're even doing better than that with an average uh, boarding per day of 183. So from uh, January to February, we're up 10 riders per day on the average. Uh, and as you can see also, uh, the transfer arrangement with Cobb County is working out well too. Since the 1st of January, we've had 276 transfers into Cobb County. So we're definitely trending in the right direction. We, we believe that January and February numbers would have been <coughs> even better, but as you know, we had some really bad weather dates uh, in both of those months, and, and that's uh, kept some people from, from getting out and, and making the trips that they normally would during that bad weather. So uh, definitely trending upwards in the right direction. I got a question for you and Gary. Mm -hmm. uh, 276 transfers from our system into Cobb. Do we have a way of tracking how they come back? Jamal and I were talking about that right before we came here, and, and right now we do not have a way to track that. You don't want to lose anybody. Take them out of the system <laughs> and come back. But no, I, I, really, it's, it's good to to track that because that, that gives us uh, a sense for the travel sure. path mm -hmm. yeah. in yeah. our system and not come back necessarily the same and, and, and we'll be working with that uh, with Cobb County. Uh, we do, we've got to find out just exactly what they're doing uh, related to transfers. Yeah, it's funny you should ask that. Um, uh, Lisa Cupid, who's the commissioner over there, had asked me, we bumped into each other, she was asking, how, how was it going? And so, to that point, I'd love you to, if uh, perhaps we can find out that reverse trip. Because going, we we keep the money, right? Mm -hmm. We transfer free away to their system. Mm -hmm. And in reverse, they keep the money. Correct. We can transfer free back. Is that accurate? That's correct. correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we'll be working on that. J yeah. Jamal uh, has a, a real close relationship with Andrea Ford, the Cobb Transit Director. He'll be talking to her okay. about that. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, the transfers were important. Um, so it's steady when they can be adjusted. But yeah, but I had known that um, when we had that many transfers. We had really talked about that. That's good. That, that boy has been the rock star route. And yeah, that, has been. Yeah, that, that was key time them all really together and stuff. So in, into the, the broad regional system. So good stuff. And one, th one thing uh, I'll mention just briefly, um, we talked about this with, with Danielle, is that as we get into spring and summer, one thing we're going to promote heavily is that uh, Route 40 is a direct uh, shot uh, to Six Flags. Mm -hmm. uh, for kids who want to work there during the summer or just want to go spend the day mm -hmm. there. Well, you know, that, didn't they hire him? They bought the hire. I thought mm -hmm. I saw something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's a hiring fair coming. Because that um, direct connect over there, <coughs> we do highlight. Now, do we share with Cobb what we're doing? Like, do we, are we giving a whole report? Or went to them? No, sir. No, no. Not, not do, 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 no, just saying in great. No, but uh, again, like Mr. Chair was saying, I do get, um, well, every other month, I'll go out and get the transfer that's transferred into COP. Mm -hmm. So that's the informal form of communication, but as far as what we're doing inside, nothing else is trying to convey to them. Okay. So we, we have regular conversation with Andrea Ford, yes. their, their director. Uh, Jamal meets and talks with her regularly, and plus we meet, we see each other at meetings all the time, so they're aware of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Any other questions? The signage, too. The signage. You love mm -hmm. the lighter. Yes. Yes, ma'am. But there are. Yeah. I don't want to steal that part because you got to be going to We just, uh, uh, we, we uh, just have got the purchase order to have those uh, signs produced that'll, that'll be started within just a few days and uh, Jamal's already talked to our uh, our DOT sign people about it so you know we're we're moving forward 
all day at the school. Yeah. How many signs are being replaced? How many stops? That's about 100 plus. And then the addition to the proposed changes in Route 40, uh, right. 10, and 30. Okay. So 100 plus. Um, do we need to have any um, approval? Do we just put them in and it was replacement? We, we ordered this person order. Town administrator, do we have to do anything formally? I mean, once they no, no, so get the doing the change in the sign phase. Correct. Posts yes. are already there. That's just administration. So y'all just will do it. It doesn't have to come back before the board or committee. You guys perform that function. Right. right. That's correct. Right. Very good. Okay. Anything else? We go. All right. The next item is also from transit services. Uh, an update on the construction project. Uh, the <coughs> We're coming along on that project really good. I hope somebody may have had an opportunity to drive by. Yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be a really nice building. Uh, despite the, the bad weather, they're, uh, they're on target. We've got uh, an estimated completion date of the, of the end of March, 1st of, 1st of April. Uh, we, I don't think we'll have the furniture and equipment by then, so we won't really be ready to function in the building by the 1st of April, but the facility itself should be completed by the 1st of April. Equipment, um, not just furniture, but equipment. Talk about, uh, remind everybody, what type of equipment is going to be? Well, the, the, the centerpiece is going to be a driving simulator, uh, where our, our, our bus drivers and van drivers in particular um, will get uh, uh, training in a controlled environment mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we feel like that will really in, improve our safety uh, on, on our routes and, and with all of our drivers. Uh, so that, that's the simulator is going to be the, the centerpiece. We, we also have a 40 seat uh, conference hall, lecture hall that will, that will have uh, all the, the up-to-date technology in it, uh, including some some boards like the, the monitor pad mm -hmm. here uh, for training. Uh, we're going to have a, a drug testing suite uh, in there, uh, which will greatly add to convenience of us having to test uh, drivers and, and other staff members who are in the, the federally required uh, random testing pool. So um, we feel like the, the building as a whole is really going to improve the efficiency of our operations. County Administrator, is, is the, when we go to our board retreats, we're trying to get the size of this, this conference center. Is it like the library of Dogwood that, that we do our retreats at? Um, it's probably a little bit bigger than that. Bigger than that? I'd say it's our, I think certainly that, that I think it'd be a good spot for you to have your retreat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was just asking. Okay. Very good. And it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than our previous training room too, because that was that probably held maybe twenty five. What we do over there at the old courthouse. Mm -hmm. okay. And so we were okay. we moving along. So yes, sir. Um, no issues. Um, you know, again, you're talking about training, operational efficiency, risk management. I'm, I'm, assume, I'm assuming that um, our incidents that we may or may not have had are within reason, meaning that we're not quite a year into that. Yeah, yeah uh, admittedly, we, we've had a few uh, at fault accidents with the buses, nothing, nothing major, nothing involving other, other vehicles. Uh, and that's something that we're constantly talking to our third party provider uh, about. Uh, and again, that's, that's one uh, benefit we have of. Uh, the addition that we're working on is because risk and safety is going to be down there with us mm -hmm. to where they'll, they'll be even more hands-on uh, with our training and, and accident procedures. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it, it, maybe you guys have said it, it, have we captured rider experience? And have we owned Aston survey? And maybe we still grow up to do that. But I, I think at some point, well, what's the what's the rider's experience? You know, um, is, is there any 
us to do that? Or is it, do you think it would be valuable to understand what, what was your experience? Well, we, we do that. Uh, Jamal and I together or separately will actually ride on the, the various routes at, at different times mm -hmm. and have conversations with the, the people on the buses uh, to see what their experience is. Okay. And, and overall, it's, it's been very positive. And it was also captured in the 90 day report. And I think we have another we survey that's going to go out soon, uh, Ms. Danielle. As well as at the community uh, meetings, and it will be online on Douglasville, um, the <coughs> Connect Douglas, as well as the home page. Yes. So it will be dig digital and uh, paper. Okay. Very good. Any other comments? Yeah, I just have one. Yes. Let me say one. Uh, <laughs> I uh, just have some interest stuff. I believe you were working with the public health department, uh, the Douglas uh, Health Department, uh, regarding car seat safety, and you were thinking about utilizing one of the things. Do you, you remember that conversation? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, of course, uh, Safe Kids is, yes, is safe already, kids. They're already using the bus platform uh, for their, their car seat uh, program, and certainly. Uh, the, the Bay at the Transportation Center will, will be available uh, to them uh, in inclement weather so they can get everybody out of the rain and cold. Okay. Uh, so absolutely, that's all the time. That's, that's, that's all the time. Okay, thank you. So you're okay. back. Yeah, um, with public health, um, do we make this for our CSP? Mm -hmm. We go past CSP? So again, it just last time and I thought we talked about routes and basically making the adjustments in you know, the under bridge. Um, you know, some people um, don't mind buses coming to their subdivision, and you know, some do. But then how do you how will you how will we smooth this out, right? At some point, you know. District one and district two, you know, obviously that's where the need was, that's where the CMAC grant um, because of the need, um, the map overlay. Um, how, how do we, I mean, other than making small tweaks, how do you expand out to make sure that the greater need is met um, versus, like Commissioner Mitchell said, you know, I've got to walk a mile to, to get to the bus. How, how do we do that? And I know I get flex, but that's not the solution for everything else that would become a flex system, right? Um, so, what do you do? What do you see? This is thought now. Well, we'll we'll look at pockets of population density mm -hmm. uh, where where there are, are are large subdivisions or housing housing units. Um, that that will be one of the deciding factors where we go, and, and also uh, from from public requests. That's 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 as huge as anything is where we're getting the, the request for service from from the, the citizens. Right. Because part part of ridership is that you've got to this main artery do the, these four routes. Uh, but there's sub arteries that, to, to sort of expand ridership in other words I just can't get to it. And I you know, I listen to the commentary sometimes I'm like, man, but we haven't even saturated we haven't really gotten out there, right? Um, and so at some point you, you have to you, 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 your spine has to expand. Miguel, you you logistics guy, help me. What I'm trying to frame is: is there some logic behind expanding beyond the routes to extend? Yeah, that, no question about it. You you want to reach as many people as possible. Uh, typically, how that is done is through a service analysis, uh, either initially a, s a survey would be online or disseminated through flyers. But more so as part of a broader effort, you could do it either with a transit services uh, uh, study analysis, mm -hmm. or even as part of the comprehensive transportation plan update. Mm -hmm. There would be an opportunity uh, for public input, and because it is all modes of transportation, we will be touching on not just roads and bridges, but transit as well. Okay. No. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and, I, and I think that one thing that the, the county will need to start looking at 
I'd say or later, I don't know which, which one of the commissioners would prefer, is, is a, a demand response dial ride uh, system. Now, uh, fixed route works really good in high density areas, but it doesn't work so well in, in uh, rural areas. Uh, so to, to really provide the, the overall coverage that Douglas County needs, I think that's something that we do need to look at at some point in the future. I was under the impression that we were going to start looking at it this year, which is 2020, at that demand and dialogue program, similar to Carol, right? Mm -hmm. I support that rule that we have. I know that we have senior housing unit out there off in that Bill Rick area yes, that I believe we're utilizing. So I'm planning, I know um, the children of the community said we are phasing the move more later, but what are you Well, what, what can we do? My suggestion on that would be for us to to spend uh, the rest of this year looking in, into dollar ride demand response and, and maybe presenting that to the commissioners as a, a budget improvement request for next year to start in 2021. This is one of the private buses, <coughs> is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. And the Minister McGill stated some sort of feasibility in our transportation study because, and then also public feedback because we've got to make sure that who's going to ride uh, and also the logistics behind it is going to be feasible for us to take the bus out there. It's going to call for the maintenance of the vehicle, the operations, the driver, and also the vehicle by itself. Demand, demand response, the, the per trip cost is very high. Yes. We had a stakeholders meeting last week in Iowa, the mayor and the city manager and myself were marking that the commission of guidance, of course, takes the meeting with us, and so we did this high interest So we took care of it, so we hear So I'll just and one of the things that uh, as far as the company has to up to we're trying to do, planning on doing, is having holding the meetings which are going to be held monthly at different locations throughout the county. Mm -hmm. One of those locations be out in Villarica. It could be within that community uh, mm -hmm. on the lake uh, proper. And we'll have an opportunity to get feedback from them this year. What your uh, disposition is for Frankie? Yeah, um, I probably got a different position on, on this topic. Um, it may be premature to, to pursue. Um, I, I, I would want to send the wrong message. Um, the Dow Rock, when we just got into this system, um, the CMAC grant funding was focused, to you know, get back on your point, um, in addition to the greatest need. And, and so, uh, and we made a very optic, like, okay, you want to bring the for this? And okay. Right. It was already not that cost effective. And, and so that's going to cost. And, and so now I'm thinking back to the budget. That you're going to put a system that get primary. And so, because again, it's concentrated right now, your funding is concentrated with your current route system. Now you're going to create a brand new route system that may not be tied to that system. It's going to be a full route without it. It goes a half million, million dollars. When we first start these conversations, we went to Cherokee. And so it's, it's one of those like, but here's a thought. Why, why wouldn't they just call, cut the deal with Carol County? In reverse. Where did you use their system? And then slap them. Could we enter into something like that to sort of extend your system more? I mean, it's something to think about. Um, it's just the timing, I, I think, to your point, the feasibility of this. I, I, I get that we want to entertain it. I get we want to meet the needs of, like, hey, well, what about us? Like, okay, we, we understand. Um, but how do you, it, it, I mean, everything's about money. And we got it like that. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, 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 to have that conversation. Um, but you, it's trade offs. And it's like, okay, well, let's finish where we're at right now. Let's make sure this has been fully completed before we extend. You know, it's like, okay, let's, let's master Atlanta. You know, as you talk about routes and hubs and Delta Airlines used to work with Delta, you know, before they began to expand to other, you know, other, other areas. Um, it, 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 it fully saturated in certain areas. So um, I'm just like, okay, guys. But, but I get it. But how do you balance the two? And, it, and my biggest thing is like, okay, well, you know, back to that, I'm sure. Hey, we're in the budget, okay. Mm -hmm. We have that conversation. 
I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll go in whatever direction this committee or the full board wants us, wants us to go in. Uh, you know, if, if it's your choice to, to do the, the men response style ride, we can make it happen. Uh, or, or, you know, we can, we can make some recommendations to you. It's, it's, it's going to be up to y'all. Yeah, the commitment was this was supposed to be a three year pack. We agree that this is going to be a pilot. We're going to learn some things out of this pilot. And once we get that experience in three years, we will revisit something like a more expanded. Now we're accelerating that. And I haven't, I don't think we, we quite got the lessons we need to learn. And now you're going to add a, uh, a dial back. Like, okay, guys, now we're about to stretch thin. But again, uh, again, along with that, I, 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 um, we can have any committee to talk about it. I have no problem with the committee. Um, but let's make sure that uh, there's conditions that says, okay, to your point, feasibility, um, uh, okay, down ride. Right. No legal partnership can be explored with Carol um, because it's been written. Um, so again, you talk about costs. And so I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, it's always about funding. And we still got to solve the funding for when this system runs out. Right? So it's still like, okay, guys, we're getting ahead. You got a two million dollar funding that you two 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 years out. I, I know there's other funding opportunities per se, but like okay, I'm just gonna go two and a half three million dollars. Just like and that's what I'm saying. I, I can't obligate to the future because it has a financial condition. It's just me. It's like no, not ready for that yet. Um, yeah, and, and I think there's a lot of intelligence in each of them before we make mm -hmm. decisions. I think the opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity is going to be there to get input, do outreach. That doesn't mean the commitment is is with Congress. It's we need to know where we are, what the demand is, and then okay. make a decision. Yeah, and I and, and I guess I sort of started this whole conversation to make make the point that the fixed route is not for everything. I mean, you can you can only stretch it out so far. And understood, but we just have to start. Got to get up here. You know, and, and I think the position, uh, I don't disagree with you. There's um, transit and mobility is called options. Got it. Uh, and it's about balancing. It's like not digital decision. And if you should do it, how would you go about doing that? And I think we just, we're just talking about timing and funding. Right? So I, I get you, you want to acknowledge that it's not no. Sometimes it's just not right now. So you're not hearing no from me. It's more of okay, prove to me that you got this under control. Prove to me that this thing is working. Prove it, you know, so before we begin to put another option on the table, I mean, look how long we went before we added another option. All right, so we finally added an option the very first, what, 15 years, uh, and, and so now, it wasn't 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15 years, and so we, like, and that's what I'm saying, give, give, it, give it a moment, you know, we even been 15 months with this new system. Let's perfect this. Let's, let's just really see what this is. Um, but I don't disagree. Uh, um, but again, in the meantime, it's like, well, hey, could you cut a deal with um, Carol to at least get, get the service over there going? If, if, if it's that much of a demand, now again, y'all got to do y'all work as the administration to prove that it warrants that. But I don't think anything would prohibit us, like, well, I don't know, if y'all want to extend your system over here. Well, I don't, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but uh, transitions. The third party uh, provider that operates our system, they operate Carol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, well. And everything is all wrapped in. But Carol's everything is just exclusive to Carol. They're not coming out south of that. So they don't have it. I believe that Villa Rica population and Post Road, they're looking more or less to come into Douglas County to the mall shopping, those and things. They don't want to go to Carol. Yes, so I'm not sure if it'll just be something that would be conducive to. It's just you pick it up, right? That's, mm -hmm. It's simple, but you flex, really. Mm -hmm. Going to the door to pick them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's no, I think it's, there's no boundary constraints, per se. According to, if you write within your, your procedures and protocols, if you want to go into another county. And I believe you make an appointment, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right.
Good topic. Gary, did you finish your, your yes. section? Yes, sir. All right, Gail, let's keep going. <coughs> All right, next item also is from Transit Services. We have an update on the voucher program and CMAC application. Oh, there you go. All right, well, we have, we have good news out for two grant applications. Uh, we're full speed ahead on the, uh, the CMAC uh, grant application for $1.6 million in federal money for the second year of uh, operating the fixed route mm -hmm. uh, bus system. Uh, there's, there's two components uh, that, that we need to finish the application. One is to hold the, the public hearing on it during the first commission meeting in March. And then after we hold that public hearing for the Board of Commissioners to author, authorize a revo, uh, resolution for us to move forward with the application. Uh, the How only, is that on the agenda? It's not yet, but it will be. Uh, the only other thing we're waiting for, and, and this is in FTA's hands, is that they haven't issued their 2020 certifications and assurances. Okay. And so once they do that, we'll I'll have to bring those before the Board of Commissioners to, to have the Chairman and the County Attorney sign those. Mm -hmm. And then that'll be the last piece uh, of that, that application. So anyhow, uh, we're moving along just as we should be yeah. on, on that application. Uh, we're also working on an application for another grant funding for our, our voucher program. Uh, we will be asking for $108,000 uh, for that that program. It will require a $72,000 match. Match uh, programs um, uh, going strong. We we have about 130 uh, people who are actually in the program in the waiting list of about 80 more. So okay, so, so I'm sorry, say the number again for the record. 100, about 138 people in the program are waiting this of about even more. And and I'll have to bring uh, that before the full board at that first March meeting to get, to get permission to file the application. How much would it take to, to, to get that list? I know this will always evolve, but what would it take to, you know, to go off us to get to the 100? We finally got over that, now we're, this, this we're pushing over to 200. Um, how much? It, if you're asking how much it would cost to clear out the, the waiting list, mm -hmm. uh, just roughly just the most valuable. $75,000 to $100,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. About the program is working though. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we, all right, so the voucher program allows me to take my, you know, somewhere and call someone, right? Mm -hmm. They come pick me up. Um, who provides those services? These private, are private, private providers. So a list. List. We have seven private providers who offer that service. Mm -hmm. And the way it works is the client calls the provider directly mm -hmm. to arrange the trip. Okay. So these are people that you have signed off as an administration like these are the ones you can only use this, this voucher for? That how it works? Those, those seven providers. I guess the vetting they have to go through them together to be you know, there's one one Obviously there's a vetting process uh, for, for a company to become a provider. And it, it's, it's through the Department of Human Services and it's pretty strenuous. They, don't, they just don't let anybody serve the seniors in this. Absolutely. <coughs> Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda uh, is, as you may recall, over the last almost going over a year now, we've been going through the process of trying to qualify consultants to do uh, design work. And the last round, uh, we advertised the project, uh, or advertised the services. Uh, back in, I think it was in December, and uh, we retained the firm of uh, Goodwin Mills and <coughs> Kaywood, uh, and they have completed the review of the first phase of the responses, and uh, they're going to give us an update on where things are. We're going to need a little help. <coughs> <both sides. coughs> Thank 
afternoon. I'm Rhonda Davis, and I work with Goodwin, Mills, and Caleb. I'm accompanied today by Carol Lennox Hall, who's at Lennox Hall Consulting. Um, we have another member that's a, a part of the group as well who's not with us today, um, but I'll get into that in just a second. We are here today for, to provide um, the Transportation Committee with an update on um, where we are as far as helping you in your selections for um, professional consulting services. Um, just to give you a little history, a uh, little background, um, August 19, 2019, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners issued a request for qualification um, for solicitation for that would be RFQ. This RFQ was for, for, for professional consulting services for the transportation projects of indeterminate scope and schedule, and it was to be an on-call um, basis. And the submission deadline was September 20th for phase one. That was um, to be done in two phases. Um, it was also under the, with the understanding that as a part of the process, the firm selected and shortlisted as finalists would move on to phase uh, two, which would be the suitability response. Um, today we're just here for phase one. Douglas County elected to have the evalu evaluations of the RFQs um, have the evalu evaluation done by a third party um, independent source. And on November 5th, Douglas County um, Board of Commissioners entered into a professional services contract with Dylan Mills and Haywood to perform, the, perform these evaluations. Um, the evalu evaluations were performed by three professionals who were qualified, knowledgeable, and experienced in the transportation field and would be conducted in an unbiased and professional manner. Um, and so for that team, Goodwin Mills and Kaywood selected um, three. Um, again, Harold Linnicole, who's with Linnicole Consulting. Um, just to give you a little background on a little bit of our experience and what we, what we bring to the table. Um, Harold is a, can I tell how long? <laughs> four year, uh, he worked with uh, DOT for four years. Um, and worked his way from construction into a variety of offices and then ended his time with DOT as commissioner of DOT. Um, also, Bryant Poole, who's not here with us today, he's in a very sunny place right now. Um, he, um, it, he was with DOT as well, worked 28 years with DOT and ended his time as um, district, uh, the, the district um, engineer for uh, the downtown district. And um, I am Rhonda Davis again, and I worked for DOT, had the pleasure of working for them for over, a little over 10 years, and spent time in construction and design, and also uh, ended up as state aid administrator before um, I left work to actually stay home for a little while with my kids. Um, so that, that's our team that we, that we uh, used to, to actually do the evaluations. Um, of the evaluations, there were 25 vendors. So you guys had a really good pool of people to, to choose from. So 25 vendors submitted for consideration. And of those um, 25 vendors, there were 11 different services that they were um, eligible to be able to compete for. Um, and those 11 are listed here. The, um, it ranges anywhere from major and minor road improvements all the way to right-of-way acquisition. So quite an array of, um, of services to choose from. Um, these services were listed in Appendix A of the RFQ with a complete description of the service and requirements for each. Um, again, the vendors were allowed, they could uh, submit for any or all. They didn't have to submit for each and every one, so they could pick and choose which ones they wanted to, to apply for. Um, so we, for the selection process, we selection method for phase one. Um, the first thing that we um, were assigned with, once the county um, established the criteria um, and handed it over to us. Um, the one thing that, that they, the desire that the county wanted to have was that they wanted to make sure that they aligned with Georgia DOT and FHWA, um, their processes for selection of vendors. And that's in the, the event that at some point in the future, um, some of these projects could actually qualify for fund federal funds. And, and when federal funds become available, certainly want to take advantage of those. So with this pool and the selection process and determining this pool, this will allow you to be able to, to qualify for those funds um, in using those um, vendors. So that was, that was important to the county. Um, and as a part of complying with these federal guidelines, the county used a two-step evaluation process. The first was being a response to an RFQ, uh, request for qualifications, which we're reporting to you today as phase one. And then as an RFP, which would be the request for proposals, and that's your phase two section. Uh, the field of 25 vendors submitting for phase one, the RFQ, were to be narrowed down to three to five vendors for each um, area. And then, they were asked, then they'll be asked to submit for a, an RFP for phase two, 
the process. Um, so today we're talking about, again, that phase one. And that phase one um, totals up to 50%. So the scores that they will receive today would be for 50%. Um, and then phase two would obviously do the simple math. 50% would be applied for phase two. Um, so for the area classes and certification um, that we were um, to look at for the different vendors, um, the first task was to determine if they were pre-qualified. So that's important as far as DOT standards, that you have all the pre-qualifications to do the work. Um, and DOT also issues that pre-qualification certification for them. So that certification was to be included in their submittal. So those submittals um, clearly stated what they were pre-qualified to, the work they were pre-qualified to do. So once we determined and we were able to verify that they were pre-qualified, um, the next step would be to actually evaluate each one um, based on two different key fields, one being crime, the crime's experience and qualifications along with their project management team, and then also their resources and workload ca capability and capacity. Um, and you can see the different ones, 30% for the experience and qualifications and 20% for resources and, and the workload capacity. And again, this is how it's stated in the RFQ. Um, so as far as the project management and key team leaders, um, we were to actually look uh, at their education. We looked at their professional registrations, relevant experience, and experiencing using the GDOT um, specific processes, manuals, and guidance. Um, the prime was also evaluated based on the experience for the previous five years. So we looked at their, their past five years' work, of work and work in delivering similar projects. Um, and then also for resources and workload uh, capacity, same thing. We looked at um, the project manager and key team leads. We looked at their workload. Um, and their capacity, and we also looked at the resources dedicated, um, that the crimes are dedicated to be able, at being able to deliver the work. Um, so once we were able to, to look at those and, and evaluate those based on that, that, that specific criteria, we actually um, were able to come up with a rating. Um, and uh, the rating system that we used, um, we chose the zero to five um, rating system. Zero would be if um, they actually requested to be considered for services, but they didn't actually qualify based on the RFQ requirements for that services. And then it ranged from does not meet to semi-meets to meets, exceeds, and far exceeds, that being the five. Um, there were also some vendors that did not choose to apply for certain areas, and those vendors we just left blank. There was no score at all assigned for those, so it's not held against them either way. Um, so that was the, the scoring that we used for to determine um, their ratings. And then once we were able to tabulate the scores, um, we were able to come up with the top five for each of the area services. Um, with the exception of um, number four, the bridge replacement improvement design services, there were six because we had a, a two-way tie for the fifth place. And then also if you'll notice uh, number 10, the right-of-way acquisition services, there are only two listed. And that's because there were only um, two that submitted that were qualified for the work. So um, that is, that is uh, the product of the work that we've done for um, being able to, to evaluate the different vendors. Um, so for, we have submitted this to, to Douglas County. Um, and then, so the next steps will be um, that Douglas County will request a written proposal from the finalist for major categories of services for transportation improvements as determined within the county's best interest. Each finalist is going to be notified in writing and informed of the proposal due date. And then once those are received, they'll hand those over to us for us to evaluate as well. And we're going to rate according to um, the established guidelines and again in the RFQ. And these will also, these will be based on technical approach and past, past performances. And you can see the different weights given for each area. 40% for technical approach, and that's, that would be for them um, the technical approach to be able to deliver the project and then um, also their specific qualifications or skills that they can bring to the table that will benefit the project um, and actually um, help provide the county um, with the, to meet the time requirements. Um, and then 10% is given to past performances. So that would be like any references or um, any past projects that they've worked on, um, the performance evaluations that they can provide for that. So that again, um, would total up to 50% and those scores will be added to phase one and then that will give you an overall idea of um, your listing and the um, vendors that will be available to you to choose from for your on-call services. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any questions? Any questions that we can answer for you? I know that's a lot of numbers. I'm sorry. Those get kind of dry, don't they?
No, I, I can follow you. You, you did well. Uh, get, I've got a couple of questions to solve sure. the floor. So, um, very well done. Very good. Love destruction. I'm sure you might take this back. Sure. If this was good. Um, very good. Question for you. Just for I heard 50% and 50%. Yes, sir. Uh, phase one, day seven. Got all that right. Um, you use a one to five scale. And so my question is, the 25 that responded, how did you find your 25? Did we turn them on? Did we deliver them to you? Or how did you get that 25? Those were delivered to us by procurement. We met with procurement um, back in December, and they delivered those proposals to us. So those were the ones that were given to us. And those were based on the new we go the reshuffle? That's correct. Okay. Just, we, we're just in time some taking it. Okay. All right. So then they came in and you evaluated them. Um, and again, based on the buckets, I get it, the categories rather. Um, did you feel comfortable what you saw by way of responses? How about that? And at some point, you will see the detail. But what did you see? Do you, you, know, want, do you want to answer that? Yeah. My, my, my question is really about doing business with Douglas and, and making sure that our processes are clear, how you engage us. So I'm just curious. Okay. Well, it's apparent that everybody wants to do work with Douglas County because you had 25 folks that responded to your RFQ. And they came in here, they were sent to us. And, and what we found, all 25 had qualifications that were approved through the Department of Transportation, Georgia DOT. So all of these did meet some qualifications. Now, in a lot of cases though, what we did find, uh, when somebody got a very low score, basically we were told uh, in our preliminary conversations that we were to look at the prime consultant, the prime contractor there that's, that you're going to be dealing with. So a lot of them did not have the, in, in the categories or in the things that they were going to be producing, they were using subs themselves. So we could not rate the subs. I mean, there's a lot of subs out there. So we were just rating the primes, and a lot of the primes in some of the categories did not have the qualifications that I spoke of for that particular qualification. They had qualifications that met other things. You had 11 categories, and they certainly had qualifications in some. Some of them had all of them, but some of them just had a few of them. We only look at the prime. Um, and, and, I, I, and again, I, this is your guys' work. This is not what I do. Um, but if they respond to the RQ as a team, it, it seems like this approach this, it, it only speaks to the season. It, 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 someone, it sounds like, I didn't say that it does, it just sounds like, well, what, what about those people who are new that may be one to three years old? Um, it just seems like we out the gate, we're only going to look at the primes. And, and so how, how do you, because again, just like you guys have, it sounds like you guys had you know, two, three companies come together to sort of deal with a situation, right? I'm an ex-consultant, so I, I know how to read business models. And so I'm like, okay, I get it. But I'm just, how, how do we, I'm still going to come back to out of that 25 and down to 11. And uh, maybe that you presented is what you presented. Were they good? How about that? Just keep it. Were they good? Yeah, they good? Yes, they were. Okay. Yes, they were. But, like I said, some of them did not have. For instance, in your RFQ, your key personnel requirements in the RFQ, the key personnel had to be from that company. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were not. Some of them that had a low score, either a zero uh, or something. Well, if they had a zero, they just did not meet and it might have been just that the key person was not from that firm. Yeah, and I get it, because that was our criteria that we wrote. It just it makes me think, like, because sometimes we have to, it's called strategic um, sources, right? You, you go pick people up, they'll flex organizations, right? We specialize in this, but I've got a relationship every now and then. That guy's so good at what he does, and he partners with us, and it's in and out of based on the engagement. But I'm, we're okay. I mean, I get it. I just was. I can hear certain things like, okay, well, what about those situations? Because nothing is, is rigid. I mean, these are these are consultants, mm -hmm. right? Big flex out, big flex in, depends on what the engagement is. Um, but, but I get the period in which we're saying we want to be sort of 
specialize only in this, but it doesn't give room for, I may not have that talent right now, but you could always go cut a deal with somebody to have them as part of an assignment. So. That's done every day. Yeah, right. That's, it, it, is, it is done every day. Right. But the parameters that we were to follow did not allow that. Right. No, I got and, that. And yeah. that, that would be a call that you would have to make. Mm -hmm. um, because, yes, what you just described, it's right. done every day. I'm all prepared. Madam Chair, go ahead. No, just uh, on your previous slide, I noticed you had Mormon Isabella on yes. one of the, but yes. the new name, I believe, yes. is Atlas. Yes. Okay, just and there was you. another, um, so that was how they submitted. So we left it true for how it was submitted. Also, I think KCI has been purchased by. I think they've been purchased. KCI. KCI. That's it. That's it. That's it. I think there was another that we, we talked about just look at seven transportation and services that you know a lot of those projects on the federal building. Some of them. Did you these one, two, three, four, five, six? Did they? Uh, are you looking at one, two, three, four, five? I'm sorry. Did you look at DBE and MBE ability status? Did you did they have that particular status, or am I in the weeds? Just wondering. Did you take a deep dive on some of those projects because a lot of those transportation projects are federal. It was a vetting process for the procurement, right? Correct? Before they came to us? Is that yes. part of that vetting process? One of the requirements for any of those categories is that they meet a minimum of 15% DB. Okay, gotcha. That's all. Yes. That's all. And a lot of those, they were they listed their DBE firms, which is which is very which is very right. good. Is it okay, that's good. That's good. Any other thoughts? County Administrator? No, sir. I'm good. You're good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finally got through this. Great presentation. Yes, good. very crisp. Very, very good. Um, you gave us assurances. Uh, and that's something that is, is always important because you guys have been around a long time, way more experienced than me. But the people who engage with, 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 with municipalities and counties, they just want to make sure, they just want to feel that the process is, is solid, right? That it was, it was fair. Uh, you got to compete. You, you, but at the same point, it's just one of those just. And this just, it, it, you, get it. you brought a lot of um, integrity and, and uh, assurance to the process because that's my okay, that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Carol and Ms. Mill. Next item on the, on the agenda is a proposed uh, street name change. And we have here with us Mr. Bruce Mercer from uh, Douglas DOT. And uh, Ed, I think, is back here as well. And uh, they will explain uh, why this change is recommended and needed. citizens about some confusion with some of the uh, street name signs that are currently in place due to a GDOT project that was completed um, somewhere in the past year or so. And it was the realignment of uh, Post Road, uh, Mason Creek Road, up at Veterans Memorial um, Highway. The old road alignment of uh, Connors Road used to come down turn and follow this path and this is the path that was named Connors Road and would continue on and tie into what was Post Road. Mm -hmm. Post Roads used to align itself and fall off the page and align with Veterans Memorial. In doing so, we had man on the top but we had this section that came down which was Mason Creek and would eventually make a turn to go to Mason Creek. So, this realignment post as today 
as it crosses the interstate, comes up and tees in, or not tees, but intersects with Veterans Memorial. Mm -hmm. The old alignment is cul-de-sac down here. Um, if you enter from, from Veterans Memorial, it comes down in cul-de-sacs. So this new configuration um, required us to evaluate existing uh, street names and addresses and the new alignment with the proposed street names and addresses. So the, the legend here with the dots identifies um, your road uh, name and the address that each property is highlighted in uh, the pink outline um, is how it has been assigned, is currently assigned. So if we look at Connors, as we mentioned before, Connors came down, so we have this property here. Anything with the red dot currently has a Connors Road address. Mm -hmm. Anything with the blue is Maddie McCoy. Maddie McCoy used to come in and tee into Connors. Um, then we have Mason Creek that came down that was a small section and eventually turned, and we have two sets of properties along the frontage of what is now Post Road that used to be Mason Creek. The original Post Road coming off of, um, coming off of uh, Veterans Memorial, coming down in cul-de-sac, um, as we can see, has the gray or silver color dots that identify their address and then veterans, we have one property here with the veterans address. Mm -hmm. So when we put all this stuff together, we said with well, the street name signs are confusing, um, we need to realign and get, and get a, a process that works for all. Um, I ran this through um, Miguel, of course, and then with Ed, and they gave us some assistance. And on the smaller, um, spreadsheet that you have there, the exist in the lower section, the existing addresses. Um, over on the left we have 1981 Post Road and we have the owners. Um, and you continue down with the existing addresses. On the right side of the darker uh, black line you see the GIS proposed address. So for instance, on 1981 Post Road, we would like to consider changing that to 1981 Old Post Road because this is the property here that fronts the cul-de-sac section and that used to be called Post. We think it's better suited called Old Post Road since the new Post Road alignment comes in as the title. So, with that, we've got several of the um, street name signs, uh, street name addresses that would require changing um, many from post to an old post road. Um, the second section, when we get into the 1953 Mason Creek property, um, which is located here, it has the frontage of uh, what was Mason Creek. It could actually be either a, um, oh, told you to draw one, 3020, I want to discuss this 3020. The 1953 would be 1953 post road. It would basically just change from a, from a Mason Creek to a post road. This property here actually has frontage on two sides. So that's the one in question of 3020 Mason Creek Road. It could either go as a veteran's memorial address of the 13831, or it could go as a post road address of 2391. So there are two corner properties, um, as we've identified here. This one corner property fronts each, and then this is the fire station. We, we front and rear uh, on two, two separate sections. As you'll see down at 2900 Connors Road is the current address for the fire station. Mm -hmm. And then because it could have frontage either via, via Maddie McCoy, uh, which is the new alignment of Maddie McCoy, or veterans, that would be something that, that 
the decision would be made uh, through the fire department and what's the best decision there. So, as you can see, we'll have several addresses that need to be changed just to take care of the, the new alignment and more of a simplicity of um, street names when you're actually driving through that, through that specific area. Any questions? Yeah. Um what is the process for, I guess we've got to have a public hearing, and we already talked to the citizens around their impact of it. Is this for a couple of citizens, this realignment? I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but have we engaged the, the local community? That would be next steps. Uh, this is the initial steps to bring it before the committee, and, and then if if the committee is uh, okay with us moving forward, then we would take the next steps, uh, as was done for Veterans Memorial. Yeah, Ed is highly experienced <laughs> in doing that. Oh, so yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, but there would be outreach uh, to the property owners. Uh, and in, in the cases where they have an option of being uh, one address fronting on one road versus another, then presumably we will give them the opportunity to select. Is that right, Ed? Sure. And most of them, most of the time on corner intersections anyway, so you get a kind of a choice. Well, in such a they just say they don't know about And again, so I guess a pretty direct um, question is that because this is district based and not that big of a series, have you spoken to that matter at all? Another point too, some of these are, well, all of them are actually as confusing as it is right now, it's a public safety issue, yeah. um, especially look at Old Post Road, they get a call for 2961 Post Road, they could be on Main Post Road, the mm -hmm. Post Road, right. and this is a side street that's totally cut off from mm -hmm. Post Road. Right. Yeah, and again, what we get for veterans is, I said, we're dead on Yeah. Yeah. You just, um, no one's fine. Um, I'm good. Yeah. yeah, I think it looks good, too. As far as, mm -hmm. as far as the next step, yeah, we would need to talk to, as you already stated, the citizens, plus let Commissioner Guider know before you talk to the citizens. Yeah. So I yeah. want to get to that. That was my only point. Yeah, what, what, no. All right, with her, and then we'll roll it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I can't agree more with this when I'm driving the area. I'm totally confused now because it's, I don't know what so happened. It's very, it. just because of just the nature of the change. Of it. So this is much needed, particularly from the emergency response. So I'm quite sure uh, the commissioner about it will go through the process and we'll go from there. And, uh, and how big was our other project for the Bellman Memorial? It was large, way large. This is 19 projects. Oh, we can handle this in 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this yeah, we can swap these street name signs in a day. Oh, I mean, yeah. we just need to fabricate them. Two days of fabricating them, we've had this fixed. Yes. <coughs> okay. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Thank you, Bill. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. And Thank you. Thank you. All right, so you kind of mentioned it just goes on the agenda. What's next? Eventually, yes, it would, it would have to. Eventually, but there's no action here. This is more of this. No, it's just informational now, and and then uh, I'll get with the mission guide or yeah, yeah, the process. Process. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. After that, then we. Oh, not no. nobody. Okay. okay. Yeah. Keep going. All right. Very good. Uh, uh, next item on the agenda is a discussion. There's no particular uh, ask other than guidance at this point, mm -hmm. uh, related to Chapel Hill Four Intersections Project, and I'm going to need help with the number of that. Uh, yes. Jessica, if you would. Yes. Just a discussion. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we at the last meeting, I believe, we talked about uh, the consideration for going to 
a full five-lane widening versus the three-lane that we started out with. And when we, uh, after we did that, uh, we approached our consultant and I asked them to, to give me a summary of what changes would be entailed, not only from the project standpoint, but from the design standpoint, if we go to the full five lane widening configuration. One of the things that they uh, indicated was that because you would be widening an additional two lanes, you would have to taper back to the existing road over a longer distance. So they asked us the question, well, you either, if you want to do it within the existing project boundaries, which is kind of like the blue line there, and these lines are uh, indicative of lanes, of three lane configuration versus five lane. Uh, I, I don't expect uh, you to be able to make sense of that other than it, it's a spaghetti, uh, uh, indication of how wide the five lanes would go outside of the three. But in any event, so what they, what they indicated was that the five lane configuration, particularly on the north side, lends itself to tying into the existing intersection. It is in very close proximity. In fact, um, and there's another slide that I'll, I'll show you that shows the overall extent of the project. This is within 600 feet of the intersection, and it just makes sense to be able to go all the way north to the intersection, because if you, if you do that, then you can take advantage of the existing turn lanes, and your extra lane would come right into it without having to taper, oops, uh, yeah, uh, without having to taper, into the three lane and back out into the X lane. So that, that is the northern terminus configuration. That's what they're recommending. On the south side, it ends, the three lane ends about 200 feet north of Anawake Academy. Now this is the driveway to Anawake Academy, uh, Chapel Hill High School, Atlanta School, just another quarter mile below that. Uh, the existing ends here, and if we go to this particular um, terminus, then we can take advantage of that extra lane there, and it would just line up with it. Obviously, extending it north further and south, we're into 800 feet additional uh, extent. Another option that they've uh, suggested is that because we are, and this is a little broader look, this is Sterling Point, and they're going to be, the original three lane configuration would end about 200 feet south of that, somewhere in this vicinity here. Uh, option one would extend it to that driveway, a couple hundred feet, and option two would take it all the way to in front of the high school into, I believe that's Old Chapel Hill? West. West Chapel Hill. West Chapel Hill. Uh, yeah, that's what it says right here. <laughs> I should read my own slides. So, um, so, yeah, so this is about another quarter mile. The reason, again, is because to go the extra width, you would have to taper it back or look for a point to drop it off into an existing, already widened section. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the overall project. Uh, the section in blue is the existing three-lane extent. Going north, another 600 feet will tie uh, into Anawake Road intersection. There would need to be some reconfiguration of the traffic signal to allow for that to happen. And then option one pushes it to that uh, Anawake Academy um, deceleration lane, another 200 feet. Option two would bring it to in front of the schools. So the project, if we were to consider this um, uh, larger project, it would be one and a quarter mile 
versus three quarter will be adding half a mile to the property. And the reason uh, why they're looking for, uh, the consultant is looking for guidance from us is because they do not have, within their scope, they do not have the survey information for these other areas. Now, so we would have to accommodate that. Um, if for us to do it this way, it would eliminate having to, um, again, taper in and taper back out, and when the widening is done, come back and do the full extent. This would be completed all the way from the intersection to the high school, which is close to a logical terminus as, as we can get. The project, again, going from three quarter mile to one and a quarter mile would add cost, and we have not identified what those costs are. Uh, but if we were to prorate, and we're talking about a $3 million tag for the three lane configuration, uh, for the five lane configuration over three quarter of a mile, it might be another half a million or so. Uh, but something for consideration. There is also the option to not do any of that and try and terminate the project within the bounds of the existing. To do that, you would have to then extend back, the transition would have to be pulled back into the project uh, and we would be limited in the opportunity to take advantage of existing widened sections. So again, the, the current three-lane project uh, would terminate about 200, uh, 600 feet south of the intersection. With the five lane, it would go right to the intersection on the north side. And we have an option either to go to the academy on the south side, uh, Anawiki Academy, or to go all the way to the high school and take advantage of being able to service the high school. And that is, uh, that is the guidance that they're looking for. Uh, at this point, is for discussion purposes. They continue to do the design on uh, the five-lane configuration for the three-quarter mile. Uh, but they're <coughs> looking for guidance as to do we want to consider um, more logical terms. Right. Um. Couple of questions. So, and so this is the four lane. Um, how many were the intersections? Two, three? Four, four intersections initially. Yes, four intersections. If we were to uh, expand it, it would go to two additional intersections, but it would just be for the tie in. Uh, right. You have um, the intersection at Anna Lincoln, which we're doing something on the opposite end of the Barrow Road, right? Correct. With the lights. Correct. Um, But, but they're down the path with three lanes, right? This consultant has a body of work and scope work that's the three lanes. They did some analysis for you know, that the contract we looked at. Can you at least look at this for us? I appreciate that. I understand. I appreciate that. But are they asking for us to make a go, no go? Well, or, or the lean? I mean, it's not a commitment. I'm, I'm not suggesting that it's a committee. But you're the guy. Yeah, at the last meeting, uh, we had this, uh, at the last transportation committee, we had discussion about, from a construction standpoint, for them to design the full five lane cross section. Right. And so, <clears throat> with that guidance, they came back with, okay, well, do you want us to taper back to the existing within the bounds of the project, or does it make sense to extend it to these logical termini? And that's what they're looking for, that kind of guidance. Obviously, it would involve additional design, right. and it would involve additional construction mm -hmm. cost, which would probably be a few years in the future. Uh, yeah. so, so the design component uh, would be something that we would have to quantify, but I wanted to bring it back to committee to get a sense for 
do we want to stick with the original termini, original three-quarter mile length, mm -hmm. or being that we're considering other projects that would tie into this one, both of the north and the south eventually, uh, to consider more logical terms. Right. So I have perfect information, so, okay. Um, I, I get it. Yeah. Did you grow uh, uh, consideration in recycling like traffic patterns? Have you looked at traffic study to see what that possibly would be? Is it work uh, moving, or should we say, is it feasible to go to the five lines? It, it is feasible to go to the five. It makes sense from a constructability standpoint, mm -hmm. and it positions you for the future for the tie future. in. Yeah. In fact, uh, some of the argument that we made in connection with uh, the uh, Lee Road extension was that the traffic would terminate at Chapel Hill, but even though it was two lanes, it was slated to go to four lanes. And so that is, that is how you, you justify or make the argument that it's, it's okay to consider this project in anticipation of what's going to happen in Chapel Hill. Otherwise, they may, when I say they, federal highway, uh, the funding that we would go after in connection with the other project potential, they would say, well, it, it doesn't make sense to take four lanes of traffic through this corridor and dump it on the two lanes road that has no prospect of being widened in the foreseeable future. This, between this segment here and the one that's already been done at I-20, or uh, maybe four miles from, from I-20 to uh, um, past the mall entrance. Mm -hmm. That is four lanes already. So, be, so between these two, you can make the argument that yeah, this corridor is going to be what is being widened. So that that is the the advantage of, of doing that. But again, we can uh, we can contain it within the original three quarter mile, or recognize that it makes sense to extend it to these two other intersections. Not to provide turn lanes at these because they already have it, just to take advantage of those lanes to drop the new lanes into it. Have you had any conversations with Commissioner on Carlton? Yeah. I have. She, 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 very much. So she's the favorite of five. She said you do what you want, and that's what you would like. Yes, yes. And when, uh, when there was a town hall, um, she held a town hall that we attended. There was very strong support, public support for pool widening. In fact, which is unusual for that type of meeting. Uh, instead of complaining about why are you going to disturb my area, essentially the sentiment was where have you been for the last 15 years? This has been on the books for this entire time of environment. Why wasn't it So she's very much in favor. You finished? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, to, to your point, I, I think that sometimes it's just it's, it's a function of leadership and the ideology. And if you believe that you, your character area should be non commercial, we, we like the way it was, we like residential, we, we don't want all that over here. But I think sometimes your ideology will run into an inevitable change is going to happen that breaks free. And to the point you get all the people over there. And while they, I appreciate the beautifulness of, of District 3 and this conservation, that's a lot of track. And uh, again, people just want to be able to get, you know, get on up the street. So you right, it was a pent-up demand. I heard about the town hall that there was just such a light. Mm -hmm. But again, <coughs> leadership says but we don't want both. We don't want that. And so how do you balance that, right? And so here we are, we're trying to catch up and, and, and sort of respond to new leadership. Um, um, and so 
here's my question is that is it on the list somewhere? Is this on some list somewhere? It is on several lists. Okay. Um, All right. So yes. it, it, it's again, on this is just a discussion. So we're, yes, so it is on the on the SPLOS list. Okay. It is also on the uh, comprehensive transportation plan list. Yes. All right, so it's on the C D P list. The SPLOS list is more of a the current three lane, but that's an active project? Correct. All right, so that's so we're just that guy. So you don't you're you have to recalibrate. I appreciate you being on you're helping us think through this as a function of you know, can we do it now? How do we align this? And, uh, and, and to your point, it has become a priority. And, and what doesn't become a priority? Right? But, or how do you balance two? This is okay. If, if you have two priorities and the new one can be sacrificed, then okay, that, that means now you get into the funding. And how, how do you solve that? And, but you don't know the cost of this. We know the cost of the current SPLOS project, correct? Yes. Right. We just don't know this yet. This component. But it, yeah, it, it is, uh, again, it, obviously the priority component, but also there is a design that plays out over time and then it positions the project for construction later down, uh, a few years down the road. And so we might be better positioned at that time to move the project. To but you got a design right now, we're about to do three. Uh, and we're to, no, we're going to do three lanes, and we're going to go up to a certain point and stop. We're, we're going to do five lanes. The, the way, the way, as as after the last meeting, the guidance was design the five lane configuration right. for the extent of the project that we had before, which was three quarters of a mile, little over three quarters. Right, so just for that section. So, so we when when I posed that to the designer, they came back with, well, are you sure you want to? truncated here because you are within striking distance of these intersections where you can take advantage of instead of tapering out and tapering back in, just widen it and tie it to the system. If, if, this is, you're, not, you're not talking about well there they created the design for the five lanes all the way. Is that true? I mean, I'm still trying to figure out well, what are they saying? Like you should just go ahead and do it, you that close to what are you saying? No, no. What what they uh, what they uh, initially did was they designed the cross section of the road for three lanes, but the right of way for five lanes. The concept being that we would go through and purchase the right of way mm -hmm. for the full widening mm -hmm. at one time, yep. but exactly. build three lanes only initially. Then, when they, and that was the guidance that we gave them, then they came back with a cost estimate and said, which is what I presented at the last meeting, that you're within 600,000 of being able to build the entire five lane widening versus the three lane widening, and which you consider us designing the full five lane widening. And that was the discussion at the last meeting. The guidance was, yes, let's go ahead and do that. That's when I went to them and said, okay, they're looking at, at going to five lanes. What are the implications of this? Make sure we have all the components of what we need. Then they came back with, okay, we've laid it out and we're within striking distance of the intersection they strongly recommend that we tie it into the, this intersection on the north side. And then they give us two options because of they're aware of the consideration of cost. Uh, they said, well, on the south side, if we, if we extend it another 200 feet, then we can drop a lane into an existing lane at Anawaki Academy. However, if you push it, further south, another 1,900 feet, then you can cover the next intersection and cover the high school and the elementary school. Yeah, I get it. it, it, it the scope is expanding. Um, and so again, they're looking for guys. They're just designing. They're designing five lanes. Mm -hmm. Are they saying, okay, we still need to do some more design work to get to that intersection? So is that ask for money at some point independent of construction? Yes. 
If, if we I'm decide, well, that, that's what I need to go back to. If, if we believe as a committee that, that this makes sense to, to go to these more logical termini, and we want to pursue that option, then I would have to go to them, quantify, I would come back to the committee with two things. One, what design effort, additional design effort, what is the cost of that? And a planning level estimate of the additional cost of construction to extend it. Right. And then that would be the ask at that point. Right. So we need to get this, uh, again, I was asking about the list. Uh, and, and it sounds like at least a lean that says, yes, we want to explore it. Um, and you don't want to set wrong expectations with the public. They so were built up. It says, okay, guys. And again, that you, you stop, you stop you short of, like, okay, what's the number? And, and, and that's on construction. Back up for design, you're saying, I need a little bit more of a complete day. Um, and so how how will we is there a funding source that you got in mind? Maybe you talk to the county administrator, but we get all these things are I, I support them. Ten dollars will be one time. Uh, and they just work if they're not at a place yet um, where there's other options, funding options yet. Um, but that's what I'm saying. I, mean, I appreciate you just saying that's the discussion only. So um, what funding source we would have available today to at least keep it keep it marginally, you know, incrementally moving along. Like, well, I know construction that's we don't have much for that. But what about the design part? Well, the source? one one of the potential sources uh, is the funding that was set aside for Swastons and set aside for the intersection of Mount Vernon and 92. It looks like the state is going to cover um, nearly 100% of the cost. Yeah. And so potentially we can uh, redirect um, some of those funds to at least move the design forward. Uh, on this one. So we won't be able to get a cost estimate until we get the design. Correct. Okay. All right, so but this is related. We were doing this boss meeting last week for this thing. Something about Versailles and, and, and um, Versailles and Night to the Next Light. And it's just like, well, you need to do something about it. Finally, I'm like, what was that? I, I didn't want to bring it up. I forgot I, I'd catch some transportation. Because both Mount Vernon and Versailles, there was funding that was available from the movement and all that, and the legal and that stuff. But I feel like those were the two parties. So why is that compromised? It's not like it's compromised, but it's, it's only because there <coughs> have been two. I, I suspect there have been two iterations of the discussion on Riverside in '92. Mm -hmm. There was the initial realignment uh, consideration that involved at yeah. Waking, yeah. yeah. and so there was a funding allocation for that. That, that at some point. Um, we, we desisted from that effort, right. and then we engaged in the design at the intersection, strictly at the intersection. Right. That project is ongoing, and um, the funding for that is has been set aside. Too. Okay. So we have a, a design consultant. So the light we will go in at Riverside. It's yeah. Just, you may seem like it was there was a pause. You know, we couldn't be funded. It's, 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 instead of words you use, I said, okay, why is that? That's supposed to be a, a done deal, but okay. well, uh, but, but keep in mind, Commissioner, that, that uh, we have the funding allocated for the design component. We have not set aside funding for construction, so that is a future consideration. They'll come back with a design and we'll quantify what it would take to uh, to upgrade the intersection, and then we will be faced with funding whatever that. Clear. We talked about the Mount Vernon light in '92, and this is when we said, "Well, we, we asked the question, well, how much will this cost?" And I think we used to say, "Upper limit is five hundred thousand. We might set aside two fifty. You have to be able to 
like you asked for guidance. So in our minds, it's like, no, there was enough there to cover the upper limit as well as more likely. And so what I'm hearing you saying is that, okay, it wasn't just about the design. No, it, it, to, to put that on the list and make it a priority, a spot, and not have the money to finish it, it's like, why would I do that? And why would I make that decision? The whole intent of having a conversation was the same amount, if it's $500,000 for this one, it's $500,000 for this one. All things we need. Like we, we're looking for guidance from you guys, you gave us those numbers, and so we're holding it to it. But we wouldn't be doing it just for the design. Uh, and then like, no, oh, that, because it, it's all in. And I know it, it, there's different approaches to like, we're just we're, we're piece going along. And I, I get construction, but you know, for me, I'm like, no, I need to know a number. Um, because again, we're allocated because we're making trade-offs, big swings, right? So it's like, okay, if I take out a hand away and move it over here, because that was a greater need with some lead road, okay, but there was some left over, and we, we talked about what we were forward. So I'm just, okay. I mean, this, this is just a discussion, so I'm not looking for anything, but there shouldn't be where we, we're exposed. So hopefully some of this say, see, that's my saying. Well, some of the savings you, to finish, uh, the light that was there. So I wouldn't want to take away from Mount Vernon to go do something over there when we ain't finished the light step for supposed to be for here. So hopefully you can get a, it, you see what I'm saying? So at that type of trail, like, hold on now, that, this is new. That's already on the docket. Why would you skip this that was already occurring? So that, that's all. Just like, mm -hmm. But okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, we got to keep going. We're going to be in session here in a minute. Madam Chair, you okay? <laughs> uh, I got it. But do be noted, um, I know you guys are working on it. Not just for the record, uh, kind of industry, I know that we're working on funding. So I think we're good. Again, are you okay with we'll that? We'll keep moving that. We'll get some, we'll come back with some more numbers. Yeah. Okay. We go, keep going. Okay, very good. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, an update on Weston Culvert Foundation design. We have We've had some discussion uh, yesterday, and essentially what uh, the ask today is on the design side, uh, we need additional design for the foundation, uh, and the cost of that is $7,500, and that's to, to assist with the redesign of the footers, and also um, to provide some assistance during the construction phase for that project. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, this is this is iteration number three or so of uh, of the design of the footage for that project. However, once we complete this design, there will be a deductive change order coming back that will cover the, the cost of the design and several thousand dollars coming back to the county in savings. Uh, we, so, so this change will essentially pay for itself. So we have to, to come up with uh, $7,500. Uh, yes, savings. The savings. The savings. Right. You got a plan. We get back ready, so we put this, put it put it. It'd come out of us. Close. Where? That product, the white stone product. Well, come on. So there's already construction. There's already a construction oh, being approved. Yeah, pulling it from the future because there's cash savings. Okay, you play with cash. Going okay. with the. How long uh, is it going to take you to get for you? Reverse. So we pull it from the future in, in construction. We go owe those contractors. We take we you know, take the money from them to do this. I get it. I just went, I don't want to, I mean, it's only $75, but I'm just, I mean, well, it's spread footing it. should come early on in the construction process, so it, 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 it would be at the end. It, it should, I would say within within four to six weeks of us getting the design to them, mm -hmm. we should be processing and deducting change. Okay. So, first. Are they currently under contract, the, the design engineers, are they under contract, or are they just working off PO? Um, they're working off of the PO. This would be an adjustment to the PO. Yeah. So it really would require board commissioners approval. Mm -hmm. 
No, but it's seventy five hundred. Yeah. It's not yeah. a change. It's, it's not a change over. It's just, I, that, look, I'm 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 just highlighting the point. Like, okay, it's called cash flow, and so you go. I get it. And, and you just have to manage. You know, it's like managing the project in and of itself. So, um, do know that since there's no actual part of us, I think this is just so do know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, we're going to need to uh, process a change on this, so we, we would need uh, concurrence. Well, you just said that Mark has the authority, and, and is, it, is it necessary? You, you're managing it as is. Yeah, there would be in a separate requisition. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Take care of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. In other words, I'm just going to let y'all be on that one. I'm just. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I got it. There we go. All right. <coughs> All right. Appreciate that. Uh, next item: uh, lead road widening. Obviously, things are moving along. We we have some uh, utility. Uh, we're tracking down the utility agreements that were done during the uh, initial certification of the project, and there's a possibility that some of those um, pertaining to uh, the pipeline um, and uh, maybe Georgia Power, uh, at and I believe it was, uh, we'll have to revisit those. Once I get the numbers updated on that, I'll, I'll bring them to you. Is this new? Is new revelation? New revelation? It shouldn't be. The, all of these agreements uh, should have been processed back in 2016 or 2015. Yeah. So hopefully they would not be known. Okay. You should understand that. Okay. You yeah, got it. if it's. I think as I read that to be, is this new exposure? Yeah. You said no new exposure? Well, I'm saying I, I hope not, because it should have been processed back in yep. 16. So, it, so if it was a cost back in 16, it didn't get done. Um, then it would be an exposure. It's going to expose, it's going to be new cost. Now, see, uh, before the project gets certified, yep. all of the agreements have to be in place. Mm -hmm. And the project was certified for utilities back in 16. It was. Should be. Okay. You'll come to okay. All right, okay. next item uh, on the agenda is so a comprehensive transportation plan update. Mm -hmm. I've had uh, discussion with uh, the consultant, VHB. Uh, one of the items in the kind of a handout uh, should have a copy. And one of the items that, that uh, we discussed, and I, I mentioned it at the last meeting uh, as well, was the opportunity to uh, take a look at a take a look at a, a sub area. Yes. Uh, after the discussion with the development authority and, and others about uh, the needs in that area, uh, I, I had a meeting with the consultant and task for four B dash two. Mm -hmm is the, the scope for what would be an area-wide study for the Caps Ferry to Highway 5 connectivity that we're lacking. Uh, this scope, essentially, they would, they would look at how those intersections connect and how it, it would be, um, they, the connectivity would be improved. In terms of the cost, We've been able to negotiate no additional cost for them to do this. Okay. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we were able to essentially convince them of and trade off is the fact that there are some corridors that were listed under Section 4B-1-1 that we already have plans under design and therefore they wouldn't need to do the detailed analysis in those sections. And in lieu of that, we're doing this area. So 
So they were reasonable to the work that we They were. And it's not the tone of me to do that, just something we can work through. <coughs> How do you affect that? This this would become part of the attachment to their contract? Yep. This would be part of, it would be a revision to their scope of services? Yep. And so when we process the agreement, you would have um, all of the scope attached with this revision in it. And this is going to come to the full board? No, it's already been to the full board. Okay, so, okay. so yeah. right. I know we approved it, but, right. but you're making an amendment to the scope. Correct. So, so do we need, I mean, well, if there's no cost, there is no mark cost off. change. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. You just have to have to codify some of this my point. So, yeah. again, if that's something that you know, hey, can you do this versus that? If it doesn't materially, you know, there's a financial impact, if there's no legal impact, just duly noted. Yeah, like, I just make sure you did it in writing from the Yeah, you got to codify the change so we don't get caught later. Yeah, yeah, especially with an you know, 18 month process. Right. Okay. And, and this is from the. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so they've yeah. indicated no additional things. Okay, so go. You yeah, please have to make sure you make sure that's codified within whatever your purchase order rep would have Yes, sir. In the file. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. All right. The uh, Maxim Road Improvement Project. This is a informational at this point. We no, no particular ask item mm eight. -hmm. Uh, we had a pre-construction meeting on that project and gave them notice to proceed so that project is, is underway. One of the things that we discussed at the very first meeting was potentially having some adjustments to the radius at the intersection of uh, Maxim Road and Thornton Road mm -hmm. to make it easier for trucks to maneuver. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've made some alterations to the plan, submitted them to GDOT, they reviewed them, they concur with them. There will be a cost implication to implement, uh, but it, it, the, the quantities would be additional quantities of concrete, for example. We'll quantify that and bring it back uh, to the board, but there would be, uh, again, an improvement to the project, but there would be additional costs that we will uh, quantify. Right, so this bill is ready to turn. That wasn't part of the original design? No. Well, th there was an improvement to the term, but the radius was not um, brought up to the current standards. It was brought up to the previous standards. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. so, all right. So you, you can just clarify what, what, what was, what's the cost, you know? So, uh, I, I don't know. It should not be significant. We're, we're probably talking. Uh, at most a couple thousand dollars. Oh, I mean, it's that that like that that yeah, I should. Okay. Thank you. Hey, there's a thank you for me. Uh, I was going to ask you, uh, there's a median along the area in the maximum road, uh, what is that, Thor Road area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have we ever thought about putting some reflectors on this thing? I'm telling you, at night you can't see. I'm not saying people might write on top of it. Well, you we're going to talk to us in the meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to re be reconfiguring that median uh, as part of this project. That's part of the project. Good. Yes, and okay. so there'll be new striping and reflectors, mm -hmm. and hopefully that will take care of the problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Uh, okay, well, not, not on that one. Uh, yeah. Next item on the agenda is uh, street lights. Mr. Uh, Pia, you like this one? So we just have a uh, street light list we've been working on. So the list actually came from the Board of Commissioners. The prices came from Georgia Power and Greystone. Um, so at the very top, so the top section, there's the Liberty Road, Post Road, Highway 5, Chapel Hill, all those. Those are the ones on I-20 that were previously approved by uh, the Board of Commissioners. The total on those was $95,730.53. So, 
So phase two would be the next set, the next two sets of rows. Um, so the first set of rows would actually be the middle set. Those are roadway segments. Um, so Lee Road obviously would need to wait on the Lee Road widening project. Um, the next one is Highway 166, where Greystone has come back on there because um, there's actually no power. The power is about 200 feet, 200 feet off the right away. Right. Um, so they what they were they were proposing here, sixty thousand dollars. That would get your major intersections on Highway 166, which would be Tyree, Post, Cats Ferry, Big A. West Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill, and the uh, Highway 5 roundabout. Uh, Bright Star Road um, from Highway 78 to Highway 5, West Stewart Mill, Simon Road, Dorset Shoals. The, uh, for example, there's 82 existing poles on Dorset Shoals. Those are quick wins. They just go out there and put up, put up lights. Um, Corsi Lake Road, Tackett Road, South Sweetwater, Mount Vernon, Sky View and Post. Uh, the total costs for those, the Georgia Power portion, $316. Um, Greystone has more lights. This, their area covers most of these. Would be 130379 Greystone actually only had one, one light. The other one were existing, had existing lights on it. Mm -hmm. So, go back up to, to we got 166 corridor over there. Her was far west, coming east. What about the front roundabout? That's included. That, that is always the roundabout. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, just I didn't. But every night in here, round that roundabout. Yeah, the Highway Five roundabout at 166. No, oh, no, no. I'm talking about the new one is being built down there. Oh, <coughs> no, two. that one is not included here. It's under construction right now. So the lights included on that in that roundabout. On the project, you know. I don't know. I know we have an agreement with them to include them if they were necessary for the design, but I don't know. These are lights at, at intersections or lights along corridors. So the lights along corridors. It just so happens the 166. That's a 10 mile stretch. It's only at major intersections. I mean, one of the things that you, know, you brought up early on was just that that lot of kids like to live along that section. And so that, that was mentioned before all of this came online. And, and so I'm like, okay, so what happened to those lights that were supposed to go all the way around from that? that where is that at? All the way over to, I guess, the first two would be Chapel Hill, I don't know, maybe something else. Because that, that was on the list that, that we originally talked about in the full board of commissioners. So how did that fall off the list? Yes, there's not enough money to put lights on that 10 mile stretch. I'm saying, but how do you fall off the list? Could you do, you maybe you can't do all of them, but you can do mm -hmm. some lights. We can do, yeah, well, that's what's proposed on is the major intersections, which is 60,000. Yeah, and you can have a test and you can use them how we buy. Yeah, it's the major. Well, it's just the there. major intersections. Just go back a little more, just a few yeah, more. Yeah. It's not that much. Probably maybe another one, but a new roundabout. I want them. Just. I know what you're saying. Yeah. You just we can check on the new roundabout and get back. You did add it back in there. Um, and sometimes you can have things on this and just have zero sometimes, but it's just the fact. Okay, what happened to that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You good, Mark. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so we'll so find out about the new roundabout. If that's the case, I will add it, and yeah. there will be a revised cost on that line item. And I think so, you want from the roundabout to walk uh, up to Tuscan. You know, yeah. Tuscan I'm not talking about the, the circle. I'm talking about all the way around the corner, around the bend. That's where the danger is. That's where my son and him got in trouble. It's around the bend, going back out toward you know, 61, basically. It's that strip there. And you're telling me that lights are there? Yeah. They're on this list. No, I don't know where it's, it's dark. Right. Right. So that whole road's dark. There's no mm -hmm. light on that mm -hmm. entire road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where are we talking about? From the new roundabout, going toward Chapel Hill. So going past Tuscany. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That strip all the way. So 
So from the Mew Roundabout to where? Oh, the, the Chapel Hill. You know, when you go around. All the way to Chapel Hill? Yeah. Uh -huh. so I but that's what, I'm sure that's what you were talking about. That was right. the original right. conversation. Now, I'm okay with adjustments. Of no, that's not included. That's not included yeah. on here. Yeah. Now, the Chapel Hill intersection is. Right, but we're going. And you have Tuscany Hills, too, so. Is that on? I yeah, see, see that Tuscany. Uh -huh. So you made it? To, so you no, it's not. That is not included. Oh. Okay. So that's been updated. So there are five. Yeah, that's what we want. No, but that there are five intersections. No, you, we, you did, but you shifted out of the area that was a primary need, um, our primary need as well. Um, now let's revisit that because that I mean I'm sure you brought to yeah, that District was, Three. That's what that was District Three saying. That's what they wanted, including Madam Carpen. Um, it, it, it's too darker on there. Oh, yeah. uh, too many teams. We, we should talk about intersections that, to a certain extent, has stop signs or, or, or um, red lights, etc. cetera. Um, um, but, but still, you're talking about a 10, 10 mile stretch. Line. That's like Riverside. I mean, that was seven and a half miles. Like, no, guys, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, people complain about Riverside. Like, that was dangerous. And so, I, I'm just saying, how did this fall off the list? For, so, let, let's, find, let's try to find something for this. Let's. let's yeah. So the reason it initially fell off is because we didn't have, I mean, there's not enough money. There's not enough money to put street lights along that whole section. So I discussed it with the chairman. That was, it was so get, get, get what we could get. We was trying to get what we could get. Let's see if we can put some floods. We may not be able to cover it all the way with just some large, uh, some lights with high density. Okay. Let's see. I'll check one. Okay. You want to go with the rest of these or not? I'll just you probably need to hold on. What's the total? Oh, we're going to have the total. So, uh, we got a total. probably no point until we get the. Uh, <coughs> we, have a, we have a total cost. Let's, let's go back to what was left over in the spots when we need to animate the computer. It's called Operation and Safety Bucket. As we pull the side, sidewalks and the lights. So where are you pulling this, this funding source? So this funding source was all, had already been allocated and it was 500000 out of the $1 million for safety. That was that total. Right. Yes. Yeah. So total cost for these, and there's a lot of these that are very quick wins. They can send a truck out one weekend, they can do 30, 40 intersections. Okay. Um, so you're looking at total installation cost of all of these, you're looking at um, $158,000. And, and why can't you get, so what's left in that, that half million dollars? Where's the other half million, um, 300 some thousand? So 95,000 was already approved by the board for I-20. So there would be approximately 245,300 dollars left over. Okay. So what can we do for that? Um, they put 128 lights on the other side, and that's seven and a half miles. You may not be able to do all that per se, but can you get six lights for it? I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, that's close to every other, 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 I mean, spread them out a little bit more. I don't know what the distance is for lights. Yeah, no, I'll check on And then you can go a large list of intersections. Yeah, that was included in the record. That's included in these prices. Oh, he's a reason for the record. He is reason for the record. This is so people can get over there and highlight this. Yeah, so the intersections, um, Highway 78, South Burn, Hickory, North Burn, Hickory, Anawakey Road, and Pope, Slater Mill, and Pope, Presley Mill, Slater Mill. Uh, stop sign on Slayer Mill, Timber Ridge, Presley uh, Mill Drive, Highway 5 at Banks Mill was on the list. Um, that needs to be put on hold till the new roundabout's been completed. Mm -hmm. Highway 5 at Berea, um, Bear Creek and Mason Creek was on here. There is no, the pole is there. They have no clearance on the poles. Um, Berea and Daniel Mill, there is an existing light at this location. Bright Star Road and the Connector, Highway 5 and Bright Star Road, Stewart's Mill, Central Church Road, 
Liberty, uh, Liberty Road and Coal, Bright Star and Cowan Mills on here, but there's an existing light already there. Cowan Mill, Mason Creek, Post Road, Daniel Mill, um, Doris Road, Cedar, Ephesus Church and Coal and Liberty. Post Road, Essence Church, Highway 5, South Giles Road, Highway 61, High Point Road, Highway 166 and Post, Highway 5 and Kings Highway, uh, Bright Star and John West, there's an existing intersection project there, uh, Highway 78 and John West, these, uh, a couple of these are Jordan Power, Highway 78 and Liberty Loop, that's, hat, that's two lights at that one. And then the other portion of the loop, which Villa Rick is taking care of, is Mirror Lake uh, Boulevard and Liberty Loop. So Villa Rick is contracting with Georgia Power to do those. Um, Post Road, Pool Road, Pool Road, Johnston Road, Post Road, Banks Mill, Highway 78, and Post. Um, there are a couple more listed, but there are existing lights there. Stewart's Mill and Reynolds uh, needs to be after the intersection project. Stewart Mill, Yancey, West Stewart's Mill, there's, uh, there's a pole with no clearance there. Highway 5, Tyree, Highway 78, Tyson, West Stewart's Mill, Woodland Drive, West Stewart's Mill, Creekwood Drive. Total installation cost, including the ones on I-20 above, uh, two hundred and fifty-four thousand. Right. So it looks like um, this report is there's an advocacy going on there. I see a lot of district four in this. Um, I'm curious as to maybe district one is probably not. But that's primarily city, right? But I, I don't see a lot of district one. So district one is mainly up, up above. You got South Sweet Water yeah, Road, yeah, Mount Vernon Road. That's the uh, yeah, that's on the line. God, I got you. But, he, but, but my, my point was, but that's primarily the city, though, right? If yeah, but, the primary city. City. but I did ask every commissioner mm -hmm. and the chairman for input. So I, every everything yeah. that was asked for by the commissioners is on this list. Yeah, I gave you mine. The, the interstates. Mm -hmm. like yes, ma'am. And Commissioner Carter gave quite a few. She going through her areas. So she got quite a few. No, I, I, again, it, it, I, and I appreciate them driving, and I just recall this thing. It's like, we like crickets. Okay. We like the, the, the nightlight. You know, and that, but to see change, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing to myself, like, okay, I get it. Because again, it, 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 it's, it's changed. Like, okay, wow, they might change the character. I put, I put lights up there. There's all this, we like it, girl. We don't. We don't we don't want that. And it's something that you respect. Okay. But to see this change, like, and, and, I'm, and I'm lying, I'm like, okay, that, that, that's real. That might light up district four. And, and I'm, I'm hopeful that if they get it, if, 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 if it's being advocated, it is what it is, that that's what the citizens want. Um, but but to, to see this change, to, to see um, that shift is, 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 is encouraging. So I'm good. I'm good. All right, anything else on this? So do we do something with this? Um, no, not yet, I don't guess. I mean, it's on hold until we can get it approved. So I'll go back to, uh, you gotta get to yeah, I'll go back to Greystone and... Uh, you gotta get approved from them first. All right, I need to get cost estimates from them on that section. Yeah, I understand. But if there, right, just how, how long would it take you to get that, $40? No. So, no, so it's gonna take last that. time I brought it's gonna take a while. Yeah, that was I get it, but y'all if it, it, it does and I'm gonna let the district three be that 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 was taken off. I, I just think that um, I mean, everything that was added. I don't I don't think it was taken off. I think we had discussions with Valley that I mentioned it and then the other all the commissioners you all said about it. You know, I think there was some questions about it. So I backed up a little bit as well. I'll just change a little bit, but we still have a few. But I, Mark, I see Tuscan, because there were some questions. I didn't want it all. It was, it was yeah, that was more. That, that was, was more about process as opposed to the need. Yeah, remember what we mentioned. The need didn't change though. But 
to so sort of like a piece of tape this off the grid. It's like, no, we just do the process right. And, and then that, to, 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 to like, it, it's like, it, okay. Um, so again. the initial request was Highway 166 from Tuscany Hills to the roundabout. Right. It was my understanding it was the Highway 5 166 roundabout, mm -hmm. not the new roundabout. Mm -hmm. So that's where the confusion was. Okay, so you're gonna see that's so oh that's a hijack. Oh wow. It, because I know that, that I mean, we were always clear on what that was, but talk to the district about that. Well, oh, like, yeah, that might be the case, but I misunderstood what was asked. Right, so that's what I'm saying. This whole shift, you you took out ten miles and right, shifted right, it away. Okay, all right. It was taken out. You revisit that. Yep, I get some more project well, process. One, there was a kind of person that I mentioned, it, and I'm from District 3, so you can ask me. I wanted it, but it was a pushback, and I mentioned it, and I don't remember which condition, but they just kind of started saying you can follow the process, so I left alone. <coughs> and so let's put it back on that mark, because I want that's what I wanted. Yeah. It was a safety area for the babies coming out of the New Manchester area. And coming back to the chapter here before. Okay. Because we're we'll we'll taking. Yeah, because no, I had known that but one of the conditions pushed back on the work yeah. session, and I just said, I yielded, I retreated, because yeah. my baby was wrong, but I want to take care of the other ones too. Yeah, yeah. yeah but okay, but the, mm -hmm. I think the center was outside the different district. The, the need is still the need, though. We, 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 we have to take the commentary like it is. You don't go to safety under that. I'll, I'll like, no. Deal with the, did you have to back up for the process? But the need, that 10 miles should not have been taken out. You just got to do over. You got to back up. But you don't, it's like, you know, in spite of, okay, I'm going to, it's like, no, because it's just like, that's not what that's about. And that's your district. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, but that's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, anything else? No, yes, sir. Okay. It? It, it, good meeting, man. You're 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 good. It's always very needy and, and, and so that we have to so I appreciate you throwing this in this. Kind of mission, are you okay? Yes, sir. You got you got yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, just a few questions yeah. for Dale. Yeah. Stephen on the good side of It's under okay. review by the Okay. Um bottleneck traffic coming out of the wakey trails I just all those houses in Anna Wicked Trail is at least probably 1,300. Has there ever been a light discuss coming out of that subdivision? Um, and I know that's Commissioner Robinson's area. I'm just asking. Coming out is about to come on. I don't even know if you get a quick one coming out of the commission. I'm just asking. Because I know I've been there just walking there. I, I don't think it's, I think there's only one way to eat in that subdivision. Is it just one way to eat or? And then last but not least, on um, major thoroughfares such as Post Road and other areas, uh, have you ever probably had any discussions when we will uh, resource Post Road again, you know, like E Road, those major arteries such as Post Road and Road? We, Yellow, uh, I'm sorry, Liberty Road, any, any discussion on those? Well, that would be a discussion for the next round of contracts. Is it, would it be the LMI? Mm -hmm. Well, it could be. Typically, that major corridors like that are lost. Oh, yeah. So they would, um, next year, there would be an opportunity for a SPLOS component uh, as well as the LMI. So we can, we can look at it for that. I was just Right, but sometimes I look at those two major, several, several major things. I don't know if they're on the list for future resurfacing. No, but we can take a look. Okay. That's all I have. Right. Gary? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys. This meeting's been long enough. Um, if nothing else needs to come before this committee, let this meeting be done. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Okay, we're good.